Using loops in tracks can be tricky because sometimes they have their own rhythm or their own melodies and they won't really fit into your track that much. However, if you learn this one, co one thing called resampling, it's gonna actually make it possible for you to like do some very cool rhythmic bets for your tracks, such as this one I have here. This is done entirely with loops and if I remove it from my track, it's gonna sound okay, but... feel there's something missing. However, let's see how I managed to create those sort of loops with resampling. The first thing you notice in this part is that you have sort of a synthesizer that goes like this. Now this synthesizer is actually this guy. As you can see, however, when you listen to it, it has its own rhythm and also has its own melody. So I cannot just put this here and then expect it to sound good with my track because it will not cooperate. So what I did is resampling. Basically, I took this uh, and I took the first half, like the first part of it, which only has a specific note. I recorded this and I imported it in a plugin called Harmor. Harmor is a FL Studio plugin, which allows you to both, it's both a synthesizer, but also a resampling. So you can import audio samples in this and then you can tweak them. And whenever you play a note, it's gonna play a pitch shifted version of that sample. Because I only imported the first half and not the, all, the, all the sample, it all it stays on one note. And now I can just play around with it. And that's what I did. With two Harmor instances, with that sound, I wrote this part. And because the sample restarts every single time I trigger a note, it allows me to like tame the rhythm as well. And on the second version of this, like the second instance of that, I activated the legato function, so now I can do this. Obviously, the reason why I'm doing this da -da 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 thing here is I have this philosophy that every single instrument family in my tracks, I want them to feel like they're evolving, like they're variating and something like this. And this is the breakdown of the track, which starts very quiet, but then progresses toward the climax. And here I wanted this part to sound like it's evolving. The way in which I did that is obviously here. I have two voices of armor, one voice, the higher voice is doing this sort of, you know variation here, which is very cool. Uh, so I just used the sound and resampled it that way. Now for the percussive loops instead, I did a similar thing. For the percussive loop, as you saw before, we have something that sounds a bit like this. However, this is the original sample. As you see, it has its own rhythm, doesn't really fit my track that much. So not good, no bueno. And I see people doing this all the time, like when they're beginners, maybe they found a loop or from action strikes or damage, and they put that loop in their track without caring if the rhythm in the loop actually fits the accents that they have in their tracks. And that's not very good, you know? It's like saying, I'm gonna use sugar on my pasta just because sugar is, is delicious. But it's not, it doesn't really make sense all the time. You know, you need to like be conformed to the recipe you're, right, you're, you're making. So here I need to be conformed to the rhythmic layout I have in my track. This track is also like in 5 4 so it's a very specific rhythm. So what I did is, first thing I did is I took this and I cut it and pasted it many times over, tweaked it, mangled it in a way that now it fits my rhythm. And now it's like, it's okay with the accents of my track. However, I the second issue of using loops for percussion is that it's very easy to use a loop all the time and just, you know, copy paste it and just don't have any variations going on. However, again, I want every single family to be interesting. So percussion is a family too. And I wanted this loop to feel like it's evolving. Uh, and I wanted this loop to go more and more intense, the more the track progressed towards the climax. So what I did, as you see here, there's an automation. And whenever this automation kicks in, we have a stutter. Basically, I added that stutter with a plugin called Grossbeat. And I added it because I wanted this loop to feel like it's a bit unpredictable at times, a bit unstable. And the more the track progresses towards the, the climax, the more unstable it becomes. And basically, uh, other than that, we also have like the percussion kicking in and stuff like that in this bit. So it's like the loop is getting crazy, but the percussion is getting crazy as well. And that's another thing. Then here I, uh, the last thing I have this, it's just a sub hit from Ava Instinct. However, I added some delay on it and some volume automation to change it into this sort of. So when you put all the rhythmic stuff together with risers and shit, it sounds like this. And 
and with the orchestra. And that really helps. So whenever you have to use a loop, don't be limited at the idea of like, you have a loop and I just, you're just gonna use the loop as it is. But actually ask yourself, can I extract something from this loop and change it drastically into something else? Because most times you can, and that allows you to create sounds out of sounds that everyone uses, but no one uses them the same way you do. Using loops is not cheating, and the smart people can actually create freaking amazing things out of using loops. Anyway, if you want to check out the whole track, this is a Final Fantasy VIII cover, and you can listen to it on my Alex Piccolo Music channel. And also, if you want to learn more about how those sounds were created, the ones I showed you now, because using loops is one thing, but actually being able to create them on your own gives you the freedom to do whatever the hell you want. There is a course that was made by the same guy who designed the sounds from the Ava Instinct Library, and it's on Evanon right now. It's called the Cinematic Sound Design Course. If you want to get that course, I'm going to leave it down below in the description link there. If you instead want to stick for the free stuff only, obviously subscribe to this channel because there's going to be a new tutorial pretty much every week about cinematic music. So yeah, that's it. I hope you learned something and check the description for more resources. Bye-bye.